Hi, my name's Don, and I'm an old school kind of guy. You know, in the old school days, we had slide projectors for presentations at our uh, aquarium society. Slide projectors. I think I mentioned that before. Today, we have PowerPoints and stuff much better than that. I don't even keep up with. In fact, you can even embed videos into your PowerPoints now. It's kind of cool stuff. So what's the point? Well, you know, I was a software engineer, and I did presentations at user conferences. And if I want to toot my own horn, I did more than a few. That's some pretty nice and big places. That's nice. So what's the point? And that's the question you should be asking. What's the point of your presentation? <coughs> Excuse me. When I watch some of these presentations, whether we're talking about the computer field or the tropical fish hobbyist, sometimes I wonder if these speakers aren't trying to show off what great skills they have with their computer. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, they create a PowerPoint that's got a moving background or got multiple colors and so forth and so on. And all it's doing is showing off their ability with the computer, but they don't make it easy for people to see what's on their slides. Now, what I learned a long time ago is that the best thing for a presentation is if it's going to be on a computer, have it on a white, white background with black lettering. If it's going to be on a projector or a screen, Put it on a black background with white or even bright yellow lettering. People can see that. Now, obviously, that's not going to work if you're putting up pictures of fish. But if you're putting up pictures of fish, don't overlay them onto a busy background. Just makes it hard for people to see, especially if you're really clever and you make the overlay transparent and the fit it backgrounds bleeding through your picture. Oh, that's terrible. Number two, another thing I learned a long time ago is uh, I don't care if you can have a handout or a slide projector or a uh, PowerPoint or whatever. Don't read your slides. Most of the people in the audience know how to read. So if you say on your slide, today I'm going to be talking about tropical fish. In specific, I'm going to be talking about the life expectancy of neon tetras with varying degrees of accuracy based upon, no, 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 come on. Whatever you put on your slide, let it be related to what you're saying, but don't repeat it word for word. Let the words on the screen and the words you're saying complement each other. Number three, speak up. <laughs> if you go to speak at an aquarium society or a computer society or a church or a boys club or whatever, especially if they don't have a microphone, but even with the microphone. I hear people talk so softly, I can barely understand what they're saying. And if they have a microphone, they hold the microphone in my ear so it doesn't make a bit of difference. Now, come on, people. Speak up. If you can't speak up, then you don't deserve to be standing up there speaking. And for pity's sake, one of the things I learned in the computer field is computer geeks are real good at monotone. They can, for you old timers, they can do a Joe Friday. 
well, I just want the facts, so I'm going to present just the facts. Here is the truth. This is a very exciting field of, of study as we discuss the influence of the binary system upon the hexadecimal translations from the octal language as we convert from PCs to mainframe computers. No! Let's try that with fish. Well, today we have a, a wide display of the various types of tropical fish. We're going to be looking in specific at rift lake cichlids. Let us start with all the rift lake cichlids that reside in Lake Tanganyika in nature. No! Come on, people! If you speak like that, don't do it. Don't do a public presentation. You're going to bore everyone. You're going to embarrass yourself. Come on, don't do it. And I wish the computer field would learn that lesson. <laughs> okay. Two more major points. Know your audience. Know your audience. I know that sounds like something obvious but if you're going to an aquarium society for instance some are specialists so when you go to the cichlid society you don't just talk about cichlids because every cichlid society is different some have very strong emphasis on the rift lake cichlids some have uh, in enough interest in the West African cichlids, the river cichlids, to to make them of, uh, of value in your presentation. Some have a large contingent of people that are into South Americans or Central Americans or dwarf cichlids. Some are really interested in breeding new strains of cichlids. Some are not interested in breeding new strains at all. And the list goes on, even in a general aquarium society. Does this society have a large contingent of saltwater people? Then you should include some saltwater in your presentation if you have any knowledge of that. Um, and in a in a general aquarium society, extreme detail is boring. Keep everything high level and moving, flowing. If you're talking to the Lake Malawi Cichlid Association, uh, they probably are going to like detail. The more you got, the better. Okay? Last point. Stop your presentation before everyone falls asleep. Stop your presentation before the leader of the group has to say, well, I think we've had enough for tonight. Because no matter how they say it, everyone knows that's code for we are bored to death and we don't want to hear no more. If you follow some of these rules and others, study a little bit, a bit about making presentations. There are people out there far better than I am at doing this. When you're done speaking, how do you know if you did well? Because everyone comes up and says, oh, good job, good job, good job. No. That's the way people do it. You know how to tell if you really did a good job? If they invite you back, or if they get other people to invite you to come speak at their groups. Now there's when you know you're doing a good job. Repeat invitations. All right. Kind of a downer of a video. But if you follow these rules, everyone there is going to have fun, and you will too. If you aren't good at public speaking, you probably aren't having fun doing it. You probably aren't any good at it. With that said, everyone's got to start someplace. Nothing hurt, nothing hurt if you try, but study it first. Don't just get up there and bore everyone. Because what are we here for? To have fun. Bye.